And I just wanted to share my testimony of how I became a Christian. Like I was saying, mine is not the testimony of, oh, I was in the world. I killed a hundred people. I was into witchcraft. Or, you know, some of these very, you know, I don't know what to call them. I don't have that type of testimony, but every testimony is powerful. Those types of testimonies are powerful because God sometimes allows people to go through stuff so that after they are saved, they understand what other people who are in that situation are going through. And God can use them to save people in those kind of situations. But mine was different. I gave my life to Christ very early. I was 15 years old when I gave my heart to Christ. And actually, I, I went to a girls-only school. I went from a family that protected us, you know, very nice needs, well need together family, parents married. My parents were married for like 56 years before my dad died. You know, that kind of family. So when I gave my heart to Christ, I had really, I never had a boyfriend. Like I was sharing, I almost had one. The first time I was asked out, I went to socials, I went to a girls only school before. And then this year, the last year, I was in a mixed school where there were boys and girls. And then there was this social night on Friday where a boy had asked me, you know, to dance with him. That was my first time ever. I enjoyed it. The boy was handsome. I liked him. He had this deep voice. I think I've always liked that kind of my husband's voice. Anyway, so I was very excited, you know, as a 15-year-old, never had any brother, nothing, nobody, and this was the first time my heart was beating. And then Sunday, I went to fellowship, and then I was touched by the word, and I gave my life to Christ. So I had to forfeit that boyfriend. So it never happened. Anyway, that was my life. And so I started very early. I started very early. And when I got into college, I actually got into college at 16. And I joined the fellowship there. I just started serving God. I started serving God. Every Friday, I would go to um, a middle school and high school. I joined the group called the school visit group. I would go and share the word of God in fellowship. And I was just thinking. All those kids I share the word of God with, all those kids that gave their lives to Christ, I don't know how many of them are evangelists today. I, I'm, I may not have one, you know, a thousand souls that I can see that I want to Christ, but I don't know how many of those kids I minister to that God might have used to win hundreds of thousands of souls to him. You know, so when I look back, I thank God that I gave my life to Christ at the time that I did. The light of God's glory has always been shining in my life. All through my years in college. Even after college, when I got my job. You know, I was a Christian all through college. After college, we did this thing they call the youth service, national youth service in Nigeria. Then I joined the coppers. The coppers, we called, <laughs> they called them. So I joined the coppers fellowship. I was serving. I would go into all these villages, missions. You know, I would go into all these very dirty, marshy places I would put my feet on. But do you know there's always reward in serving God? And I did all that. And when it was time for me to get a job, like I told you, I was 100% maths in high school. But when I got to college, man, I wasn't one of the best in, in class. I didn't have a first class, I must confess. Because, man, studying too hard was not one of my own things. But thank God... I got a job, like the job I got in the oil and gas, I mean, prime premium position. Some of my mates in school then who had first class, I studied engineering, electrical and electronics engineering. We were like five girls and 60 boys. Out of that, about 10 in the class, these people were really smart. About 10 of them had first class. Some of them had this interview with me. In fact, a lot of them, they didn't accept them into this company. And I passed and they accepted me. And then when I started working for this company, I was not going to pretend that I was not a Christian. I was so unashamed of the gospel. Every time after work, you know how it is. People want to stay late because the boss is still around. You want to stay and you don't want the boss to go home before you. Man, I did my work very well. But once we used to close then at 4 p.m., once it was 4 p.m., I would pack my things and go because I had to go to church. I had to go for Bible study. I had to go for choir meeting or whatever. And I was just serving God unashamedly. 
And God used me to save. I mean, some of my colleagues then, they were saved because of me. I ministered to them and they were saved. I know one of them who is a pastor today. So I really don't have any regrets having surrendered my heart to Christ. You know, just like Paul and Silas, when the jailers saw the power of God in their lives being made manifest, ask them, what must I do to be saved? That was my testimony at work. When things happened for me, like I was sharing, I mean, we were in Nigeria, and then we were posted to come and work here as expatriates. That does not just happen like that. And everybody in my company was like, because the way it happened, it was just so clear that this was the divine hand of God. And of course, they remember that I was not the one to wait behind because of the boss. I was the one always to go <laughs> to church. I was the one always to go for choir practice. I was the one always to go for Bible study. And so when these things started happening for me at work, they attributed it to God. That's where we need to be. Where people will see our light shining and they will give glory to our heavenly father. That's why we're talking about returning back to basics. That's why we're talking about that today. We need to crave the presence of God in our lives. We need to live out the life of God such that people will see us and because of us, they will come to the knowledge of Christ. God wants to create your own testimony today in case you are not saved. 